Hey everybody, it's Mariana with Three Peaks Classroom. If you are new to my channel, hello and welcome. I am Mariana and I am a grade three and grade four teacher here in Alberta, Canada, and I love to make helpful YouTube videos for other educators just like you. In today's video, I want to do a little bit something different and I want to go over the brand new science grade three curriculum in Alberta. I know that everybody is getting geared to teach it in September and there's not a lot of information about it. So I just wanna go over it to kind of lessen your worries and let you know that everything is going to be okay. We're going to go over each unit and what you need to understand and some, you know, some content that you need to think about as well. All right, so the first thing that you need to understand is that the science curriculum from grade from grades one to six all have the same organizing ideas. And so all the units are going to be the same. It's just what are the guiding questions or the organizing ideas that are going to be different in every grade. So every grade is going to have a unit on matter and every grade is going to have a unit on energy and every grade is going to have a unit on earth systems and things like that, which I personally really enjoy because that way it keeps it a lot more consistent, but also because if you are teaching a combined grade, then you can teach the, the unit on matter and then your grade three students are gonna be learning about this while your grade four students are gonna be learning about this, but we're all learning about matter at the same time. So that is a two thumbs up from me. All right, so the very first unit in science grade three is about matter and matter specifically, students need to understand that materials have the potential to be changed. So, you know, we're talking a lot about um, states of matter. So solids, liquids, and gases. We're talking about natural materials and how they can be changed and turned into processed materials. And that includes how did the First Nation people, how did they process natural materials in order to fit their needs as well. So those are topics that are covered. Um, there's also we're talking about the water cycle and we're talking about how water evaporates and condenses into clouds and then it falls as precipitation. So there's a lot about the water cycle as well. And there's also changing states of matter. So we're talking about solids into liquids into gas and what can affect those things. There's some key vocabulary as well in this unit like melting point and boiling point. So those are all really important. And the last piece in this unit is reversible and irreversible changes. So those are all the topics and themes that are covered in the very first unit matter. When I was in school, my least favorite subject in science was physics. And so that is the next topic of study here. It's called energy. And so the organizing idea is that students are going to be understanding a little bit more about how matter and energy interact with each other. And so that's just a fancy way of saying physics. <laughs> so the very first part of unit number two, matter, is talking about forces. A force is either a push or a pull, and you have different contact forces. And so you have things like friction, you have things like elastic forces or um, applied forces and tension forces as well. And then you are talking about specific vocabulary that you can use to characterize forces. So do you have a stronger force, a weaker force? Um, what direction is your force coming from? And I'm not allowed to include Star Wars references in all of my products, but I hope that you do when you are teaching it because we're talking a lot about the force. <laughs> When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Only a master of evil, God. Awesome. The next couple of sections in this unit, thankfully this unit is a little bit smaller, but the next sections talk about how forces can change the shape of an object, they can change the size, and they can change the movement of an object as well. And then in this uh, area as well, in this unit, we're talking about simple machines. So that is a grade four concept that is brought down now to grade three. And so in grade three, we're going to be learning about levers, wheels, and inclined planes, and what are the function of simple machines, but also how did First Nations groups use simple machines in their everyday lives as well. Now, the third unit is probably my favorite unit in the entire grade three science curriculum, and that is learning about earth systems, specifically talking about the landscape of earth and how landscapes can hold stories from the past as well. And so this is a bigger unit. If I look at the outcomes here, yeah, there's quite a few outcomes in this unit. So just know that when you're planning for next year, know that unit three earth systems has a lot to cover, um, but it should be really fun. It's kind of like it's 
it's a little bit of your rocks and minerals unit put into this one as well. So the first section here talks about how changes can occur to the Earth's surface. And so talking about erosion, rivers changing course, mountains wearing down, glaciers moving. So we're talking about changes, how that can happen. Uh, it also includes natural events. So natural events can cause these changes to Earth's surface. So we're talking about floods, tsunamis, landslides, earthquakes, volcanoes, um, and Changes to Earth's surface can be discovered and shared through things like scientific stories, or scientific knowledge, stories, and traditional knowledge. So I like how they're incorporating that First Nation element as well. Uh, the next parts talk about um, water melting glaciers. Um, it kind of is touching on the water cycle again. So you've already taught it in the first unit, but now we we can't talk about earth systems without talking about the water cycle again. So um, just talking about how water can really shape landscapes on earth. Another piece here is that how water can change, um, you know, water with interaction with wind. So we're talking about erosion and how that can really change the way the earth looks. And they have here examples like Alberta's Badlands or the Grand Canyon in the United States as well. So that is a fun little like virtual field trip that you can do with your students. Or if you live close to the Badlands or even in the Badlands, then you can take a field trip for this unit as well. The next part of this unit talks about how human activity can also change the shape of the earth's land. And so what does it look like, you know, when uh, urbanization. What does that look like? Living on the land, farming, you know, mining resources, polluting, things like that. Um, but also plant and animal activities can change the shape of the land as well. So overpopulation of animals or parasites or plants or animals burrowing. So animals and plants can also have an effect on the earth's landscape. And then we go into a massive section here in unit three, and it talks about how the layers of the earth hold stories on the Earth's past. And a lot of it, this whole section, is on dinosaurs. And that is coming down from grade four social, actually, and that is being embedded here into grade three science. And so here, this section is basically just talking about dinosaurs, dinosaur bones and fossils, and how layers of the Earth, when you dig down, you know, you can do some scientific studies on them, um, you know, talking about paleontology, things like that. And then that leads into the last section in this unit, which talks about soils. And so what does soil actually, what is it made out of? And again, this is this was part of the rocks and minerals unit currently, and now they're just including it in this earth sciences unit. So those of you that were worried about that part, it's included here. It doesn't specifically talk about the rock cycle, but it is talking about soils as well. So anyways, that is your earth systems unit in a, in an over in an overview in a glance again it's one of the larger units just in terms of like knowledge content that the students are going to have to understand but i don't think it's going to be that difficult for students to understand that unit all right and unit four in the new grade three science curriculum talks about living systems so here is where you're talking about food chains with plants with animals you're talking about carnivores herbivores omnivores you're talking about sensory stimuli with animals you're talking about um, ways to protect animals you know um, in terms of respectfully interacting with them or being aware of animal crossings things like that and you're also talking about diverse plants and animals can be found in many places across Alberta um, there's not a lot of outcomes in this unit and so I think that makes up for the unit before where there were a lot of outcomes and the last section talks about First Nation Métis and Inuit knowledge of plants and animals, which I think is going to be a fantastic section in this unit. There's so much knowledge there and there's so much that can be explored and investigated. So I think unit four is going to be also a lot of fun to explore. All right, unit five is all about coding, computer sciences. And so here I have to keep looking at my paper because the wording, I want to make sure I get the wording right. So students are going to investigate creatively and in uh, and its relationship to computational thinking. Again, this is coding at its most basic. And so you're working on computational thinking. Um, it's basically problem solving with creativity mixed in. There's going to be a lot of unique ways to approach this unit as well. Also, because most of us probably don't have any sort of background knowledge in coding, I think this is going to be a unit I think that many teachers might struggle with. 
Um, but there's also a lot of um, wonderful programs on the internet that will allow you to cover a lot of these outcomes as well. So just, just know that. So here the understandings are that creativity involves problem solving, divergent thinking. Creativity means to explore different kinds of possibilities. One thing that kind of springboards in my mind in this unit is maybe a breakout room. A breakout room requires problem solving, divergent thinking, and creativity. So maybe you can design some sort of a breakout room in your classroom to cover these topics as well. You also want to teach them some basics of coding as well. And so, you know, you're going to be thinking about breaking down a large task into smaller tasks. And so you're talking about if this, then that, those kinds of terminology as well is going to be in this unit as well. But the last thing too is that students are going to be researching a famous Canadian for its um, you know, creative invention. And there's a lot of really cool inventions that we have come up with in Canada that reflect problem solving, creative thinking, and divergent thinking as well. So although this is going to be quite an abstract unit, I think it's going to be a really important unit for students to have because it opens up the door of possibilities to a lot of professions out there. And of course, we're talking about science. So the last unit in the new grade three science curriculum is talking about the scientific method. And so here there are six parts where students are going to be learning about how to become responsible and ethical scientists, basically. And so the understanding here is, you know, what is a fair investigative process? What are the different kinds of investigations or experiments that I can do? Um, you know, an investigation builds on previous knowledge, but also I can ask a question if I don't quite understand something from an investigation. Asking a question is part of that whole process. And what is the information and data that you gather from experiments? And then what do you do with that information as well? So the the last unit is all about scientific methods and the way that I'm approaching it with my resources is that I am embedding scientific methods throughout all of the other units. So I have five units that I'm going to be teaching. I'm going to take about two months per unit to teach and I'm going to sprinkle in some scientific methods inside all of these units as well. Another way that you could approach this as well is you can take this final unit and you can do an overarching or all encompassing scientific experiment with your students, like a big one that covers all of these um, topics as well. So maybe at the end of the year, you can have your students, you know, design an experiment and you can do a science fair and you can have all of these outcomes covered in that massive um, science experiment as well. So. There are many ways to approach this. I am going to be sprinkling it out throughout the year, but you might want to do one big science fair at the end of the year. So there you go. That is the grade three, brand new grade three science curriculum for Alberta that is being rolled out this September. I know a lot of schools already in the province have trialed it. Um, my opinion is that I'm a fan of this curriculum. I'm just not a fan of the lack of information and resources that are out there for teachers in order to implement these. Um, you know, I see a lot of teachers talking on Facebook groups saying, I have some classroom money, what should I be buying for the new curriculum? And everybody's saying, I don't know. And it's because we're all in this boat together, we're all going to be introducing this, this brand new curriculum together, and so we're not sure. Um, in my next episode, I'm going to be talking about some books that I have found for the very first unit for Matter. I found some books at the local library that I want to share with you that I highly recommend and also a resource that I have recently created for the very first unit Matter so that if you are looking for something to get your hands on, um, I will be going over that resource in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys understood a little bit more of what is expected to teach in grade three next year. And um, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss next week's episode where I talk about the books that I'm recommending. I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.